Welcome back, everyone, to our Groundskeeper Chat Series. I'm your host, Meg Kruger, and we have a familiar face to the channel joining us. Not only a familiar face to the Groundskeeper Chat Series, but also to the industry. Crystal Wallace has been a, a household name of sorts <laughs> over the past few years, and he's uh, made a recent change that we're excited to hear more about. So without further ado, Crystal, take it away, introduce yourself, and tell us a little bit about um, your new gig. Uh, yeah, as you said, I'm Krista Wallace. Uh, I've been around. This is going to be year 11 in turf now. Wow. Um, I, yeah, I started probably senior year, summer, and then uh, started in the golf business. Um, okay. My dad uh, got me started in it uh, at a local golf course, and then I uh, spent the last nine years in uh, baseball and uh, football and made the change back to golf this year. And uh, it's been really, really well so far. I'm here at Terrace Park Country Club in Cincinnati now and uh, couldn't be happier with the move. That's awesome. And yeah, we're definitely excited that um, it was a move that it's benefiting you and your family. And that's that's great news. Um, and, you know, I wanted to get a little bit more background. You mentioned it a little bit there. Like, what is your origin story with turf? You know, how did you come to find this as like a career option? You know, what kind of outlets were you getting information about the turf industry from before, you know, you were a member of it? Um, not really any. I think that's one thing that I'm a big advocate of is mm -hmm. us trying to get it out there more to people. Um because without my dad telling me, you know, about what a good summer job would be and my dad being in the country club business his entire life um, and, and using him as that resource, I don't, I don't think I would have ever known about it too much, you know, and it's, it's been a question for a while now. And I've had plenty of conversations with people of how can we get it out there more. And, and when I do talk at universities or places like this and, and, and podcasts and things like that, it's constantly I keep reiterating myself that we just have to be louder because, yeah. you know, I think it should be in vocational schools. I think it should be that we should be going to high schools and talking about it because, you know, I got my start um, that senior summer on a ground crew, but when I went there, um, I didn't realize it was such a uh, huge industry and that I would make uh, hundreds of friends that I would value those lifelong friendships and, you know, and that I can do this for a life. Um, and when I walked onto the golf course for the first time and I, you know, I was a kid that was planning on going to college for business and, you know, I had never heard of this industry before or that I could make a career of it forever. Um, mm -hmm. And then I started talking to the assistant superintendent and the uh, head superintendent at the time at the um, municipal golf course that I was at. And they were telling me everything that you can do with it and started talking to my parents about it and um, kind of hit the ground running from there. But like I said, I think that's one thing that I advocate more immensely um, that we just need to be louder and just keep trying to get youth into our industry. For sure. And I like the way that you phrase that, you know, just being louder and, and making waves in a sense so that, you know, we get that visibility because it's so important for you know, not even the current labor shortage, but just longevity. Um, and also, I think it will help some of these veterans. You know, the sooner we get a next generation in here, the veterans are going to feel better handing off the torch. They can move into different positions. They can become more hands off. And it, you know, also kind of solves that work life balance issue as well there. Um, so I love how you I love how you phrase that. And I know you to be an advocate for that. So um you know, something that I find funny is when you were with the Reds, like I would go to your social channels if I wanted an update on something before I would ever go to theirs and, and no, no hate against them. But you were reporting, you know, what you guys were doing that day on a daily basis almost or. Right. Anytime I wanted to see, um, you know, great crew culture and reflect that out to the industry, you know, I would be like, I'm going to retweet something Chris so did last <laughs> week or you were always popping up. And, you know, was that really an organic effort or is that something that you put a lot of planning into beforehand or, you know, how did that come about to be something that, you know, that was such a, a part of your, you know, your <clears throat> previous gig? Yeah, I think. 
a lot of it is just off the cuff just because I love doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I just like putting some of the stuff out there that we're doing and, and, you know, bouncing ideas off of people. I tell people, you know, it's one thing with my Twitter that I'm very careful about um, is the things that I do tweet about um, Mm -hmm. just because I do tweet a lot of work stuff and even here. And because I, I, I found ways that, you know, that's ways that we can hire people from. I've gotten mm-hmm. DMs before about it of saying, hey, are you guys hiring? And it's become a good way to try and get people, new employees in. And so I said, I'm very well said it. But, you know, Steve did the same thing when he was there and just kind of learned from him and, and to put out there and what we were building and, and the type of team chemistry, like you said, that we have. And a lot of it just comes off the cuff. Uh, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm very careful about what I say and try not to, you know, I don't post politics, any of that stuff. Um, yep. You know, but uh, I think just because I think I've told people before, like, it's, it's funny that to me, it's almost like the turf world uses Twitter as our LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's kind of, you know, how I've seen some of these younger guys coming up or found them and messaged them as well saying, Hey, do you have an internship this year? Or would you be interested in coming with us or anything like that? And, and, and using it along platforms like that. Definitely. And, and like you definitely created visibility for not only yourself as a groundskeeper, but as the whole Reds crew, you, you know, you guys were, I, th- I think, like you said, uh, credit to Stephen Lord as well. Like he really created a culture that people wanted to talk about and share. Um, but, you know, through your Twitter, we got to see like the ins and outs of it. Um, and I loved especially like during COVID when you guys, you know, were getting some of that ESPN coverage for, you know, being. A yeah. crew. And it, it was like, oh, we we in the turf world, like we were already, you know, in on the best kept secret like that crews in baseball and crews in the turf industry, like have that family um, atmosphere and, you know, are able to make something as, you know, an empty stadium fun um, yeah. and loud and exciting. And so I love that, you know, that's been an important factor of your role, but, and I saw that, like you mentioned, you've already kind of taken it once um, over to the golf side as well. And I saw you were tweeting out, tweeting out about, you know, internships and things like that. Um, so have you found any success? Like, have you found any differences in the two industries and how they interact? Um, yeah, I don't think so. I think, you know, everybody is just on on both sides. Everybody is willing to help at all times. Um, people want to talk about what they're doing at their courses as well. And, um, you know, I, I would say success that way is I I think right now, um, I think, everybody is struggling to find employees and, and, you know, and that's not just the turf thing right now. I think that's, uh, you know, just America and, and what the day we're living in right now. Um, so, you know, I, I guess that's a, a plug saying, yes, we're hiring. Um, <laughs> because uh, I, I think everybody is looking for that right now. Yep. Um, you know, as I was even sitting waiting for you to start this, I was, I saw, you know, a couple of people posting uh, tweets about that right now saying mm-hmm. that they're currently trying to get staff um, just because everybody is understaffed. Um, but yeah, I, overall, I think both industries, both sides of the industry per se, really love talking about what they're doing and how they're creating um, ways for their course uh, slash field to be better. Definitely. And how has, you know, your visibility on social and also just, you know, face to face, you were an active member of like different, you know, um, conferences and things like that. How has that visibility and, you know, that sharing element that you're willing to have really impacted you for the better? Um, Immensely, because I think putting myself out there and networking with people such as uh, like you've already named earlier, Todd Schaefer or um, Tom Nielsen and getting with people like that and and being a young kid at the time and having those guys to back me, Matt Duncan, James Halavity, you know, all those guys and meeting them, Jake Tyler and them getting me where I am now, you know, and 
building and, and my first couple of years and calling them every day almost mm-hmm. um, and annoying them, asking them questions of, Hey, am I doing this right? Am I, do I do this now? And, you know, and, you know, I think marketing myself and putting myself out there and going up to people and talking to them and, and just getting out there. And I think, you know, same on Twitter, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've made friends just by starting to DM each other, Mm -hmm. through twitter in the in the industry you know dan francis who is is a big name in the golf industry now is you know he's him and i have become became friends just by starting to chat on twitter and that's just you know and and that's kind of i don't know i've I've never shied back from that no matter where i was working or anything and if someone messages me I, i always answer it might take a little bit just because i might be busy doing something but um you know i think that's the biggest thing is just to continue to put yourself out there at all times. Definitely. And to talk a little bit about the logistics, you know, cause there are definitely different ways that people can go about this as far as like setting up a personal profile or setting up a profile for their crew. You know, what was kind of your decision behind, um, you know, being setting up a personal profile aside from setting up like one for the course or for the crew? Um, I think right now, I, I think it just, I've always posted for my own um, mm-hmm. and we just kind of left it at that. And I think Steve did it as well, you know, and just kind of left it at his, you know, and, and doing it there because I think kind of cool to look back. It's, like I said, it's kind of our LinkedIn and yeah. I think it's just uh, a way to look back in the last couple of years and see everything I've posted. And I, and I think I, I, you know, I've done that to some people as well as I'll go through there and if they've applied and, see if they post things that they've done and and what they've done or what they've accomplished. And so for me, I I think it's like kind of a collage of a resume a little bit. So I think it's kind of cool to do that. And uh, like you said, now it's uh, starting to get flooded with uh, golf course pictures and pictures of my golden doodle that comes (laughs) out here and runs around like a wild man. So, yeah. I love it. No, no one could be upset about that. That's for sure. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And you kind of touched... He's Sorry, going to ahead. change as well. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> He's I'm not sure. mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but since you went with like the personal profile route, um, you know, you you have the opportunity to share a lot of like your personal beliefs, personal uh, things, but you kind of touched on how you like to stray away from, you know, politics and things like that. What's really the motive behind that? Uh, I, I think you making sure because at this day and age, yeah, uh, you you got to be careful with what you say. And I, I think you never know. And with being at that level, Major League Baseball at a country club now, um, in the NFL before minor league baseball, even even then, I, I think you know people don't understand how many people see your profile and, and looking at it. And GM could be looking at my profile right now. I I don't know. Yeah. Um, but again, that just goes back to the fact of, you know, if a member sees something that I post and if it offends them, I, that could affect my job or a player. Um, when I was with Major League Baseball, I, I, so I just stray away of doing all that just because, mm-hmm. you know, I love what I do and I don't want to hinder that at any moment. So definitely. And, you know, I think that's a great point in the sense that even though no. it's a personal profile, you're still a reflection on you know who you're who you're working for who you're representing um and it's always just yeah it's maybe better to toe that line and you wouldn't put something like that on a resume and so it's like if it's a working resume then kind of treat it the same way in that sense um but you know in the same in the same wave like the turf community is very supportive um you know when people have have hardships or they are looking for help. It's also a community that they can reach out to. And I know, you know, something that a lot of people, um, you know, lean on is kind of being able to reach out to that that voice out there in the turf industry and you know give them personal updates as well on that side. So there's like that give and take a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's you know, there'll be people that will just post pictures. And say, hey guys, does anybody have any ideas for this? And I, I can't tell you the amount of people that go and just reply to it. 
and with all their different ways of, of doing it and, and trying to help each other out. And that's what I mean. It's, it's such a small tight knit family and people don't mm-hmm. realize it. And once you get in, it's, it's a great family to be a part of and um, everybody has each other's backs. Definitely. And, you know, you've talked a little bit about the things that, you know, you found to be successful with this as far as, you know, it, it kind of served as a resume for you. It definitely served as a way for you to network and connect with others, um, get help when you needed it. But if there were somebody that wanted to like start tomorrow um, and start branding themselves, start getting that visibility for either themselves, their crew, their course, you know, where would you suggest they start? Uh, just being open. And uh, I think, you know, creating a good picture for yourself, like, you know, uh, like of your courses and, and everything you're doing and just, and, you know, creating that working lifestyle Twitter profile, I guess, per se, mm-hmm. and, you know, just, you know, like I said, being out there and, and getting involved with people and, and mentioning, you know, back and forth with other people and, and, always conversating and never shying back. I mean, I know sometimes it's uh, hard to get out there and you, you don't want to sound wrong, but I don't, I don't think there really is a wrong way. Um, I yeah. think everybody has their own way of getting the job done and, you know, to not shy away from that. And if you have a cute dog or kid, that couldn't help you there. To that, that out of usually it. gets, <laughs> yeah, that usually really gets you going. <laughs> My boss or, and I, we started our profiles around like the same time. We run a pioneer account, but then we both were like, oh, maybe we should make personal profiles as well. And he's like, it's just not fair. Like you have a cute kid that you can post on there. And he's like, yeah. I'm working with, I'm not working with that yet. <laughs> no, that works. Or like July 4th last year when we put Todd on the mower and we all yes, were yeah. around him. Like, yeah, pictures like that usually springboard you in, into bigger things. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I love that photo. That photo, like, it, it could go down in history. <laughs> I think so. I think that's a pretty iconic one. That one, or, like, there's one of us in 2020 with me and Steve, uh, with me and Ohio State helmet on, and Steve with his Michigan State flag. There, there's a couple of pictures that could really set up the tone i guess per se yep, definitely you wouldn't even need a caption you can just post it no yeah sometimes i think that's what i've done is sometimes it just doesn't need words definitely well thank you so much for doing this you know as you said we share a similar goal and just you know being louder and trying to get different avenues out there that people can take to be a part of this industry and and be a vocal part of the industry. So I appreciate your commentary and some of your um, success stories that you were able to share. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me on and uh, anytime. Awesome. And good luck uh, this season as things start to warm up around here and members take to the course. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Christo.